Nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Hillary Clinton wants to abolish it, believe me. She wants to abolish our Second Amendment. I think they didn't deny it. I don't think anybody denied it. Other presidents did not call. They'd write letters, and some presidents didn't do anything. Many people have come out and said, I'm right. You really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Hello and welcome to Fallacious Trump, the podcast where we use the insane ramblings of the smallest man who ever lived to explain logical fallacies. I'm your host, Jim. And I'm your other host, Mark. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that results in bad or invalid arguments. And the logical fallacy we're looking at this week is calling cards. <laughs> the smallest man who ever lived. It sounds like a kind of Danny Kaye <laughs> character, doesn't it? The yeah. fact that it's in... It's in all caps. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's, it's a it's a Taylor Swift reference. There you go. Because of right. yeah. her endorsement of Kamala and yeah. Trump's subsequent meltdown. <laughs> and the Harris campaign put out a brilliant press release about yeah. Trump's response to Taylor's endorsement that had so many references to Taylor lyrics. Nice. There's bad yeah. blood between yeah. them and there's... He should just shake it off. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the smallest man who ever lived was used... <laughs> Against him in that context. So I thought that's a nice one. Like that. So calling cards or Mm. possibly calling cards because it's not about calling cards, which is things that people in Victorian era used to leave to show that they'd been somewhere. It's about calling out other people for using cards. For playing a card. Yeah. Yeah, So you're calling cards against them. And what it is Uh is when you dismiss a valid argument... Yep. By simply accusing your opponent of using a rhetorical playing the, card, yeah. playing a card. Right. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So our first example is from Trump. Mm-hmm. And this was when Amy Coney Barrett was going through the process. It wasn't really a process because <laughs> Republicans were in charge. The nominal process <laughs> yeah. of, of being approved for the Supreme Court. You've talked about possible bias against Judge Barrett's religion. Only two Catholic bishops have come out to say the same thing you have. Is any effort being made by any of you to say, get the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops? I think uh, that, uh, yeah. At least other uh, leaders within the church. We're in the process of doing that. I think it's horrible what they're doing. I mean, they're playing the religious card, and it's frankly, you're talking about Catholics. That's a very major religion in our country. The valid objection that people had... (laughs) to Amy Coney Barrett in terms of her religion wasn't about Catholicism at all because six of the nine Supreme Court justices are Catholic. There was not and had never been any significant issue with any of that. Mm -hmm. It's that Amy Coney Barrett's specific branch of Catholicism was a cult. It was a thing called the People of Praise and it's a a very specific charismatic cult group yeah one of the charismatic groups within the catholic church that rose up after the second vatican council in the 60s right and it's extremely hierarchical it's very focused on obedience to if you're a woman your husband or the head of your household right and also to the leaders of the church wow there was a i think quite reasonable question at least being raised over if you are so ensconced in this religion this part of this religion yeah, and and she was a female leader within the group, which were known as handmaids, literally. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're if you're a significant part of this religion, and and the religion requires obedience to male members of the church, yeah. As a Supreme Court judge, if you are called upon to rule on something which might go against their teachings, how yeah. you know yeah. how are you going to rule? How would you respond to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now. That doesn't automatically mean that being a member of that church is disqualifying for Supreme Court justice, but it's completely reasonable to ask the question. Yeah. If this is your belief system, if you've got something that runs contrary to your belief system, how would you respond? So that isn't playing the religious card. When you're Mm -hmm. saying, well, she's she's this particular branch of Catholicism, is that okay or not, is a conversation that needed to be had at that time. Again, not that it would have made any difference because the, the Republicans were in charge. No. So the, yeah, but the, yeah, and and what he's kind of doing is dismissing any kind of bringing up of the question. Yeah, he's dismissing it in in two ways. 
He's saying this is an objection and it's an unreasonable objection because what you're doing is playing the religion card. Yes. When actually it's just a perfectly legitimate question to say, well, if you've got these kind of fairly... Uh, extreme? Uh, extreme <laughs> and and rigid beliefs, how are you going to apply... How does that make you able to apply the rule of law to people that A, don't subscribe to your religion and B, even if they do subscribe to your religion, don't subscribe to it in a way that you think is the correct way? Yeah. Yeah, perfectly reasonable. Yeah. And I mean, one of the other aspects of groups like the People of Praise Mm -hmm. is that they are quite secretive compared to Catholicism as a whole, where for the most part, people who look into it are able to find out quite a lot about the beliefs of yeah. even specific branches of Catholicism. Individual groups like these and these communities, in some cases, and in the case of People of Praise, are quite secretive about their hierarchy and about, for example, although it's known that they take vows of obedience, it isn't clear who that who those vows are to, who someone like Amy oh, Coney well, Barrett is yeah. expected to be obedient to, for example. Yeah, yeah. So things like yeah. that, again mean that the question is reasonable yeah so it's like it's it's like if you were appointing tom cruise to the, <laughs> to the supreme yeah. i don't only, think there you will should be do a, that no <laughs> there'll be, there be a lot of running involved i know he but, played a lawyer in the firm but that's not yeah that's uh, not enough. Uh, you kind of go <laughs> yeah this made up religion that you're fanatical about uh-huh. Do you not think that might get in the way of you judging people in an objective manner? Mm, So our second Trump (laughs) example comes from when he was discussing Hillary Clinton. Tuesday night you said Hillary Clinton is playing the women card or the woman card and that if she were a man she would only have 5% of the vote. 70% of women in this country say they have a negative view of you. Do you even care? Of course I care. Uh, Nobody respects women more than I do, and I wasn't playing the woman's card. It's true. I mean, she is playing the woman's card. She said everything she says is about the woman's card, and frankly, all I'm doing is bringing out the obvious, and without the woman's card, Hillary would not even be a viable person. But are you saying that women in this country vote based simply on gender? Well, I don't think they vote on gender, no. I think they vote for security. I think they vote for jobs, and that's why I'm doing so well. That's why I'm leading the Republicans by a lot. And that's why in all of the elections that I won on Tuesday night, which is five states, and then I won, of course, New York the week before, in all of those uh, exit polls, I led with women, and I led with women by tremendous margins over all other candidates. But, Mr. Trump, I mean, for you to say that if she were not a woman, she would be getting 5%, suggest the only thing she has going for her is that she's a woman, not that she was a former senator or a former secretary of state and a lawyer. Do you understand why some people find that to be kind of a demeaning comment? No, I find it to be a true comment. I think the only thing she's got going is the fact that she's a woman. Whoa. So, yeah, whoa. Apart from the <laughs> fact that everything about the rest of the statement is all about Trump. Uh-huh. So he's, he's great because he's getting all the women's vote, but he's not a woman. And that she's getting a really tiny vote because she is a woman. Yeah, so she, so wow. this was during the 2016 yeah. primaries. Yeah. And at this point, this was the day after he'd won five primaries in uh, the Northeast. And yeah. he is correct in saying that the woman's vote within the Republican Party favoured him, as did basically everyone. Right. Because he was, right. at this point, only running against Ted Cruz and John Kasich. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah I mean, yeah. he was, it's not much the, competition. The lesser of two, <laughs> lesser of two weevils. Yeah. So he had yeah. more than 50% of the total Republican vote anyway, and naturally had a higher proportion of the female Republican vote than the other two yeah. candidates. But those are female Republicans, not women yeah, in general. Not, not just women. Yeah. And he's saying that she's playing the woman's card, essentially by being a woman, yeah. and that's all yeah. she has. And as the yeah. uh, reporter pointed out, you know, yeah, she she are, she's also secretary of state and a senator yeah. and other stuff. And a lawyer, uh, uh, yeah, an actual qualified person, unlike <laughs> you, you fucker. Yeah, yeah. not to mention yeah. has policies that 
would actually help people like fighting for equality and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, protecting yeah. people's civil rights. <laughs> yeah. But no, she's just play she's a woman, so therefore she's playing the woman's card. If she wasn't a woman, she'd yeah. be getting five percent of the of the vote. Yeah. The only reason she's getting anything else is because she's a woman. Yeah. But she's mm. the one playing the woman card. I mean that is mm. it sounds for all the world like he's playing the woman card. He's playing he's playing a card. Yeah. 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 He's playing yeah. a misogyny card, I think. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody's pointed that out uh-huh. to him. Yeah. 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 And mm. I mean, that is the thing with this fallacy is that it's one of those where you have to also look at what the other person is doing because people mm. do play rhetorical cards sometimes. Yeah. Classic comedy example is Ali G, who used to, whenever yeah. confronted yeah. about anything, say, Is it because I was black? Even though he wasn't yeah. black. It plainly wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. and so even when the per- what the person was talking about had absolutely nothing to do with race or anything, he would bring yeah. that up as a kind of, as a defence to dismiss what they were trying to do and say. Yeah. And that is absolutely playing the race card. And he was doing it for comedy purposes. Yeah. And if someone is doing it, it is legitimate to call them out on it. Yeah. That's not fallacious, but. When the argument that someone is pushing is valid, when in Hillary Clinton's case, she is a reasonable and valid candidate for office, dismissing yep. that by accusing people of playing a card is is where this comes in. Yep. So our final example from Trump is uh-huh. a, a truth that he posted in 2022. He said, well, the crazed, I'm leading in all the polls, Democrats are coming at me on all fronts. Even after years of beating them back, on their lame-brained and fully debunked schemes of Russia, 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 two fake impeachments, the no-collusion Mueller report, and to top it all, illegally spying on my campaign and me, including while I was in the Oval Office, they are now playing the ridiculous insurrection card. This was a reference to the the various prosecutions against him, Yeah. one of which was about his part in January 6th. And yeah. he is trying to dismiss all of that, all of the evidence against him, all of the the valid prosecution that that was that is still pending against him yeah. all of the stuff he did that incited that mob to attack the capitol on january 6th as the ridiculous insurrection card insurrection they're just playing card. the insurrection yeah. card yeah <laughs> which is if you've got a uno uh-huh. set that's like it's the third one in is always the insurrection, <laughs> insurrection card. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Never mind re- the reverse. reverse. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> reverse play any kind of like <laughs> insurrection. Yeah. And now is the time I think for Mark's British politics corner. Of course, the, this fallacy recalls for us the delightful nature of the institutional racism in the Tory party with such fine examples as Oliver Letwin, who in 1987 stood as a Tory candidate in Hackney against Diane Abbott for the general election. I think I was living in Hackney then. Um, Having said in 1985 that the Broadwater Farm riot happened, not because of endemic police racism and poverty, but because of individual bad moral attitudes and that this was the reason black people were apparently more likely to riot than white people. Therefore, these areas should not be invested in, as this would subsidise Rastafarian arts and crafts workshops, and black entrepreneurs (laughs) were set up in the disco and drug trade. Wow. The 80s were a different time, weren't they? (laughs) They were a different time. But only just, sadly. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. During the the general election in 1987, he described Abbott as a revolutionary with no genuine allegiance to British parliamentary democracy. And Abbott retorted that he was simply playing the race card. But after all, she shrugged, in a place like this, what other cards does an old Etonian merchant banker have? Needless to say, Diane Abbott won. I think he pretty much was playing the race card there, though. (laughs) I think that's oh, yeah. a reasonable no, thing absolutely. to call out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> so absolutely. she wasn't being fallacious in that. No. No, <laughs> he was actually playing the race card. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's fast forward to the twenty first century. February twenty twenty four, the then Tory MP Lee Anderson, which we talked about, stated that Sadiq Khan had sold out London to his Islamist mates and was under the control of Islamists. And when Khan rightly complained, Lee Anderson wrote in the Daily Express, sadly. Sadiq Khan has resorted to playing the race card 
and accuse me of stoking up division. <laughs> so, uh, so Lee, Lee Anderson there, he d- accused Sadiq Khan of selling out London to the Islamists, yeah. which is a, a little but bit ca- of a racist Calling him comment. racist for being they, very racist is playing the race card. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go, like, sticking your hand up and going, yeah, I object. They go, oh, you're just playing the race card. <laughs> in March 2024, in an article for The Guardian that Diane Abbott wrote following her attempt to ask a question of the then Prime Minister Rishi Sunak about Tory donor Frank Hester, who once said, it's like trying not to be racist, but you see Diane Abbott on the TV and you're just like, you just want to hate all black women because she's there. And I don't know hate all black women, but I, I think she should be shot. And she stood up during Prime Minister's questions over 42 times during the debate about her and racism and the Tories and the donor and Lindsay Hoyle refused to recognise her and allow her question. In the article she wrote subsequent to that, she notes that as the election draws nearer and Labour stays 20 points ahead in the polls, the Tories are desperate. Their political trump card has always been low taxes and sound management of the economy, but Liz Truss blew that out of the water and taxation is now at the highest sustained level on record. So the only card the Tories have left to play is the race card, and they're going to play it ruthlessly. Oh, how things have changed <laughs> since 1987. Yeah, I th- I, again, I think what you've got there is a mixture yeah. of valid right. uses of accusing mm. people of playing the race card and mm. and the fallacy with Lee Anderson definitely using trying to use yeah. it against Sadiq Khan. Th- yeah, um, yeah. I, but I, yeah, Diane Abbott's twice used it accurately to describe yeah. exactly what the Tories are doing. That's not yeah, yeah. a fallacious use. That's not calling cards. It's just she's pointing out that they're being racist. She, if they accused her yeah. of being of playing the race card for pointing out yeah. their racism, like Lee Anderson did to City, then Khan, that would be a fallacy. Yeah, that's, they yeah. kind of often they, and I, but I couldn't find any examples. Often they accused they everyone other than left wing progressive right thinking people often accuse Abbott of playing the victim card to go. Oh yes. yeah. Here she goes again. <laughs> after you know, victimising like, her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there they go. Here she goes again, talking about the fact that she's been victimised. So that, that whole kind of victim card thing. So my, this is this is an interesting one because here's my other example. The Online Safety Act, which we talked about recently in relation to the riots in the summer this summer. You know, the Online Safety Act might, get passed into law in 2025. Here are people talking about it in 2021. The day they were talking about it was the fifth anniversary of the death of Joe Cox, who was a Labour candidate during the Corbyn election, who was murdered by a um, an online racist Nazi follower um, who believed that individuals with liberal and left-wing political viewpoints and the mainstream media were the cause of the world's problems. So you think, yeah, has he been looking at conspiracy online? Perhaps. Yeah, he's certainly done his research online. So here's Baroness Fox of Buckley, who was Claire Fox, who was a former writer, activist, broadcaster, and at some times member of the Revolutionary Communist Party and the Brexit Party. Um, wow, she spread says, herself around, didn't she? I know. She, and <laughs> as she's got older, she's certainly moved towards the right. And <laughs> during her life, consequently knows a lot about online abuse. So she was saying this about cards. My lords, can I declare an interest as someone whose receipt of online abuse is somewhat off the scale, but feel uncomfortable with public figures playing the victim card on this? I feel even more uncomfortable with the implicit conflation of a brutal murder with a Twitter pylon. Would the Minister agree there's a danger in principle of confusing physical harassment, such as horribly meted out to the BBC journalist Nick Watts, and online trolling, however unpleasant? And would the Minister note free speech activists concern that online abuse is being used to justify censoring lawful content? My fears about the online safety bill outweigh any fears of harassment. So I think there's somewhere in there she's 
being denigratory about people going, oh, I really suffered at the hands of online trolling. You know, Joe yeah, yeah, led to the death of, death of Joe Cox. And Nick Watt, during lockdown, there was an anti-masking demo that he was reporting on, and he got kind of chased around the corner by nutters and if life was threatened she's accusing people of playing the victim card when actually they're really at risk of physical harm yeah yeah she's she's pretending there is no link yeah between yeah hateful abusive online rhetoric and real world violence because she ignores her own yeah because yeah. she she ignores her own online trolling and god knows i've trolled her enough <laughs> no i no, I haven't. But you think she's a, she's one of those kind of characters that the fact that she's moved from the Revolutionary Communist Party from the extreme left to the extreme right, you would want to go. So I go, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So you would you would want perhaps it's just me. You would want to troll her online. The, the thing is, I think the, the the level of trolling, and I mean, it's entirely possible that this this is my cognitive bias kicking in. I feel mm-hmm. like the level of trolling that occurs on both sides is a bit different because yep. um, what you you certainly read about an enormous number of racist and misogynist attacks, mm. death threats, mm. rape threats, etc. being yep. aimed at people on the left. Whereas for the public figures on the right, I feel that the majority of what they get is probably people calling them racists and bigots, which is yeah. accurate. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. But they yeah. object to it and call it offensive and abusive. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's some stuff that goes on that is on a par with the stuff that, that people on the left get, but it's it doesn't feel like the same volume from yeah. what I've seen. Accusing public figures of playing the victim card just because they're getting mm. horrific online abuse. Uh, in many yep. cases, and as I say, death threats or worse. Yeah, that is something which people should be allowed to complain about and say is mm. not okay, and that yeah, uh, and recognise the fact that sometimes it does lead to real world incidents. Yeah, vis a vis Joe Cox. That's why stochastic terrorism is a thing. Yes, yes, and that's what the Online Safety Act is trying to deal with. The riots in the summer this summer where irresponsible politicians pursuing their own personal gains were retweeting and perpetuating conspiracy theories about the origins of the guy that murdered people at a kid's afternoon dance class. Yeah. And then they'll go, oh, you're curtailing our ability to say this stuff. And in in objecting to our blatant racism... You are playing the race card. So when Lee Anderson is outrageously racist and Sadiq Khan puts his hand up and says, you are being outrageously racist, Lee Anderson says to Sadiq Khan, oh, there he is, playing the race card. No, what he's doing is playing the perfectly normal hate crime card and just going, oh, yeah, you played a hate crime. I'm sorry, you're under arrest. (sighs) <sighs> if you like to argue or tell you I'm your man You win some, you lose some It's all the same to me The pressure is to play, it makes no difference what you say I don't share your greed and the only card I need is a fallacy, a wild fallacy Playing for the high one, trying to win the argument Going with the argument is all the game to me Seven or eleven, snake eyes watching you Double up or quit, double snake or splits The fallacy, a wild fallacy
Motorhead, of course, there with the card playing Ace of Spades. <laughs> So in the Fallacy of the Week, we like to talk about the Fallacy of the Week from a non-political perspective. And our first example this week comes from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And it is one of the brilliant Halloween episodes where they always do a <laughs> heist competition. Some of you have asked me what got me through prison. Was it my family? Don't be stupid. Was it knowing that my friends would eventually get me out? Of course not. I never believed in any of you. No, the only thing that kept me sane was planning for the Halloween heist those many years doing hard time. It was eight weeks. I also went to prison, dog. We're getting off track here. No, we're not, dog. Peralta's just trying to play the sympathy card so we all go easy on him. I'd rather send you back to prison than see you win. <laughs> <laughs> so the Halloween heist always gets super competitive and <laughs> to be honest probably Peralta is kind of playing the sympathy card here because there's no really yeah, yeah, other yeah, particular yeah, yeah. reason for him to be bringing up his time in prison in yeah. introducing it this year's heist but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah I had to use that anyway because it was lovely and I love that he just calls it out he goes he's just <laughs> yeah. playing the sympathy card so I will vote for him yeah. yeah and yeah the sympathy card is another one of these basically if someone is playing up how bad things have been for them in the hope that yeah. you will yeah. believe their side of an argument instead of the one that's being actually validly backed up with evidence, then they are genuinely yeah. playing the sympathy card. If they're not doing it, but someone accuses them of it, then it's this fallacy. Yeah. But it's kind of the driver for the entire Yorkshireman sketch, isn't it? <laughs> it's the sympathy card, yeah. Oh, but we had it yeah. itself. And they're trying to outdo each other. Yeah. With the, it becomes like a card game. Yeah, playing the trump cards. I see your, we lived in a shoebox in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. They go, Cardboard box, yeah. all right. Yeah. Luxury. luxury. <laughs> yeah, we're in a paper bag. It's out trumping each other with uh -huh. the cards. You can visualize it entirely as a card game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the second example is from uh, Harry's Law, the much underappreciated, I think, David E. Kelly right. legal drama. David E. Kelly was the, the brain behind uh, the practice and Ali McBeal and things like that. Yeah. And Harry's Law was Kathy Bates as Harriet, wow. who yep. in this scene is debating with another lawyer in court. This is something that absolutely would have been objected to. The law in all of his programs was terrible, right. but it was entertaining. <laughs> she is defending a black teenager against a drugs charge, and she brings up that actually maybe drugs should be legalised anyway, and so they have this yeah. exchange. If we were to legalise drugs... We could neutralise the gangs, take the drug business out of the shadows. And do what? Celebrate it? How about regulate it? Taxes. Yes, and then every liberal in America could just light up and say, hallelujah, legalized drugs. The idea was first raised by conservative Republicans. Oh, please, when? When the party had thinkers, before it was hijacked by the likes of Rush Limbaugh. Here we go. A drug addict himself. Ancient history. Who somehow fared much better in our justice system. I wonder why. The race card. There it is. Well, if I wanted to play the race card, I'd talk about the disparity in sentencing. Objection. <laughs> So, nice. yeah, she's making some reasonable, valid points. Mm. And he attempts to dismiss it before he gets to the point of objecting to this whole thing. Yeah, he he yeah. tries to dismiss it as her playing the race card. Mm. Mm. So our final example is from Wonder Woman. And this is not from the films or from the Linda Carter TV show, yeah. but the animated feature. Wow, Wonder which Woman. I was completely unaware of <laughs> and delighted by the yeah. discovery of. It's all right, yeah. it's got, uh, Nathan Fillion plays Steve Trevor. So. Wow. And in this scene, Steve has just rescued Diana from mm. their interaction with Ares. She was trying to take down Ares, as is the, the thing in the first Wonder Woman and in this one. And he gave up the fight so that he could get her out of the danger. And right. she's not that happy about it. Did you stop Ares? No, I didn't. I couldn't. What? Why not? I had to save you. Ow! I didn't need you to save me. I needed you to stop Ares. Hey, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't be here right now. I'm an Amazon, Steve. We're prepared from birth to give our lives in battle. I knew what the consequences were going into this mission. I bet you would have acted differently if I were a man. Oh, playing the sex card again, are you? You know what? I've had just about enough of listening to you go on about how terrible men are. Does the truth hurt, Steve? Yeah, again, she's making some pretty valid points. Yeah. She's a warrior. She went into battle with a literal god to try and defeat yeah. him in a yeah. vitally important battle. And she was prepared for the fact that there might be consequences to that. And the most important thing to her in that was that Ares was defeated. Mm. So it's reasonable for her to be annoyed 
rather than grateful in this instance, at least at first, that yeah. Steve prioritised her over the mission. Right. Also reasonable, I think, for her to say that he would have done it. He would have done differently. I mean, he's a, a military guy. He wouldn't like save one of his members of his platoon or whatever. Right. If that meant jeopardising a super important mission that could turn yeah, yeah. the tide of the war, for example, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. She's probably reasonable in saying that he would have treated it differently if she was a man. And he is like, oh, playing the sex card, dismisses it. It's kind of like Ken in Barbie yeah. film where he goes, I've understood what patriarchy <laughs> is. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to we're gonna play fake news, folks. I love the game. It's a great game. I understand the game as well as anybody. As well as anybody. Yes, it's time for fake news, the game where I read out three Trump quotes, two of which are real and one I made up, and Mark has to figure out which one is fake news. You see, the problem with this game is it doesn't take into account the fact that I've had a really tough time of it and for the entirety <laughs> of 158 episodes, and you're simply not acknowledging the fact that it's weighed against me and I've been saying this all this time and nobody's listening and it's just it's just unfair it's unfair I'm sure you'll agree but you're what you're going to say next is that I'm I'm just you're going to misinterpret <laughs> what I'm saying and you're just going to characterize this in a particular way <laughs> that i'm that and it's and it's unfair you're just going to dismiss all of the trials and tribulations i've gone through for 158 seven episodes as as a kind of, you're just going to characterize it in one particular way and i'm not having it i'm just not having it. it's it's simply unfair see that's is all that's i've got to say on the matter interesting because that's essentially what you're doing is poisoning the well uh, about the fact uh, that you expect me to accuse you of playing the victim card when you're clearly <laughs> playing the victim card <laughs> <laughs> well if it is one thing i've learned Sorry. over all this time is if you can mix up the fallacies <laughs> you know stand a better uh -huh. chance of getting away with it yeah <laughs> so yeah. in fake news this week i actually already yep. had a whole fake news ready to go and i had the clips right and i'd written mine and then yesterday trump was in pennsylvania something else happened <laughs> and he said a thing and i was like yeah, i mean i've got to thing. do that i've got to do that now <laughs> so i abandoned my initial yeah. idea okay we'll save that for another we'll come back time to it. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah so Trump is essentially advocating for the purge or <laughs> arguably just police having the ability to violently attack oh, okay. a specific group of people. So yeah. kind of a, a cross between people. the purge yeah. and Kristallnacht. And okay, yeah. his argument is that basically crime is really bad and if, if we just let the police violently attack people, it wouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Well, just for a where, bit though, where's, not where's all the, the time. No, don't, no, don't like one crazy. day a year. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Here is things he said about that. <laughs> okay. Statement number one. Yeah. The police aren't allowed to do their job. They're told if you do anything, you're going to lose your pension, you're going to lose your family, your house, your car. The police want to do it. The Border Patrol want to do it. Border Patrol, they're incredible. They want to do it. They're not allowed to do it because the liberal left won't let them do it. The liberal left wants to destroy them and they want to destroy our country. You know, if you had one day, like one real rough, nasty day with the drugstores, for example. Okay. <laughs> okay. He yeah. continues. All right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. she created something in San Francisco. $950 you're allowed to steal. Anything above that, you'll be prosecuted. Well, it works out the 950 is a misnomer because you can steal whatever you want. You can go way above. But you'd see, mm -hmm. originally you saw kids walking in with calculators. They were calculating. They didn't want to go over the $950. They're standing with calculators, adding it up. You know, these are smart, smart people. They're not so stupid, but they have to be taught. Now, if you had one really violent day... <laughs> no kid stands with a calculator. You know, our generation, my generation, when calculators arrive... Hang on, your generation, slide rule. Yeah, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Abacus, Abacus, <laughs> Abacus. Yeah, we had 
We had little things with strings those little, with those beads little books on them. of log tables. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reciprocals. Yeah, you could take those into exams. <laughs> it was a joy. You could write all sorts of things in those. Well, wow, wow. Like kids were walking with calculators and do that. But if you had really one really violent day. Statement okay. number three. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. But right now, the migrants are getting away with everything. They walk into a store and just empty the shelves and walk out. They put, they take washing machines and dishwashers on their backs and walk right out of the store, <laughs> and nobody can do anything about it. Stores are having to close because they're losing everything. I think all we need is one day, maybe one hour, <laughs> when the police are allowed to just be extraordinarily rough, and everyone would get the message. It wouldn't happen any more after that, believe me. Wow. Wow, it's kind of RoboCop 2 as well, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Oh, my God. That confused thing between protect and serve and everything else. Wow. Oh, my God. The fact that only one of these <laughs> is made up is really scary. Ah, uh, Man, okay, right, they're, okay. They're, they're, everyone wants to, all the police are aching to just open fire on innocent shoplifters. Okay. <sighs> okay, but that the first one where it goes nasty day, drugstores kind of tails off. The, the, the tell for me in the second one is the... Blah, 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 blah. Now, if you had one really violent day, losing mm, mm, uh, uh, whole, whole kind, kind of bunch of unsubstantiated lies with accelerating truths. <sighs> okay, so on that basis, I think mm, uh, number two is the one you made up. Okay, and of the others, yep. which are you more convinced by? I'm more convinced by migrants walking in with taking stuff and <laughs> stores closing down, number three. Okay. Yeah. And number three? Yeah. Is fake news. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bloody hell. That's excellent then. Yeah. Wow. There That's are, very There good. are aspects that I tweaked. Rather than Belloined. made up yeah, out of yeah, whole yeah. cloth, the, he wow. he talked about people stealing air conditioners and fridges on their backs, <laughs> like taking them out on their backs. <laughs> on their backs. Yeah, yeah, They're uh, huge. And, those things. and he yeah. did use the phrase yeah. "extraordinarily rough" and and questioned right. about whether right. maybe it could just be an hour or or a full day, but essentially, wow, uh, that that. Oh, that, that one was very good. Was an addition to the to the stuff he because number number said. two is kind of way out there. That whole thing yeah. of no, <laughs> we just go blah 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 dot. Now, if you had just run really violent day, absolutely, oh, yeah, and yeah, and I don't in in uh, in admitting to having made up number three, I don't want to take anything away from the fact that this was absolutely the point that Trump was making. Was that yeah, what we yeah, need yeah. is is one day where the police are basically given free reign to a to violently attack to kill shoplifters? People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What the fuck? Wow. I know. Yeah. I so, guess part of me is thinking, now that's just too outlandish for it to be true. Wow. <sighs> So, yeah, number one uh, was indeed real. The police aren't allowed to do their job. They're told if you do anything, you're going to lose your pension, you're going to lose your family, your house, your car. The police want to do it. The Border Patrol wants to do it. Border Patrol, they're incredible. They want to do it. They're not allowed to do it because the liberal left won't let them do it. The liberal left wants to destroy them, and they want to destroy our country. You know, if you had one day, like one real rough, nasty day with the Drugstores, as an example. But it's not just the liberal left won't allow them to do it. It's like the law, international <laughs> law, yeah, yeah. yeah, against indiscriminate murder. Yeah, got, yeah. The police want to do their jobs, yeah, but their jobs don't involve walking up here. That's why the guy that killed George Floyd was prosecuted. Absolutely, it doesn't just allow you to just go indiscriminately shoot people and saying i'm a policeman oh okay 
That's fine then. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? You, you would, I mean, we wish that it didn't, but yeah. unfortunately, in some yeah. cases, it still does. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, he also blamed Kamala for the situation in San Francisco. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, yeah. she created something in San Francisco $950 you're allowed to steal. Anything above that, you will be prosecuted. Well, it works out that the 950 is a misnomer because you can steal whatever you want. You can go way above. But you'd see, originally, you saw kids walk in with calculators. They were calculating. They didn't want to go over the $950. They're standing with calculators, adding it up. You know, these are smart, smart people. They're not so stupid, but they have to be taught. Now, if you had one really violent day. Where has he seen this? I mean, he's the, in his head. Purely in yeah. his, this oh, yeah. is nothing. Okay. This is nothing. This is absolute no. bullshit. What he's talking about, to the extent that any of it is based in reality, on in reality at all, yeah, is that it was absolutely nothing to do with Kamala Harris when she was Attorney General. Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. as Governor of California, mm-hmm. yeah, signed into law a bill which raised the felony limit. For shoplifting from four hundred dollars to nine hundred and fifty. So shoplifting right. anything under nine hundred and fifty still against the law, still gets prosecuted. Yeah. But it's a misdemeanor, yeah. not a felony. And there was always a limit, it right. was just lower before. Schwarzenegger raised right. it to nine hundred and fifty. Then a few years later they had a referendum in California where yeah. the public voted to keep it at that level. The nine hundred and fifty to keep okay. the, that raised Rather level, than lower it or and, raise it, and yep. Uh, yep. at the same time was a, a, a new law against shoplifting as opposed to other kinds of theft was specifically uh, created. Kamala uh-huh. Harris was Attorney General at the time, but had absolutely no input into this whatsoever. She didn't advocate for either side of the referendum. She didn't get to control it. So wow, it wasn't to do with her. It isn't legal to steal anything under nine hundred and fifty dollars, and kids weren't ever walking into shops with calculators and then walking out with a yeah. fridge freezer on their back, deciding which one was the most <laughs> yeah. worthwhile to to do it on their back. It's all complete he's, bullshit. He's obviously watched. A, there was a an Oscar short about a guy who delivered stuff in the slums in Brazil, in the barrio, basically, and people would order a of refrigerator and he'd carry it on his back yeah. up the steps to where they, wherever they were. It's an amazing nutter, documentary. That guy. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely <laughs> nutter. Made a bloody fortune. $950 a pop. But yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. So uh, wow. we have a few social contestants. Right, yeah. I hope I'm not alone in choosing the wrong one. Yeah. Well, on Facebook, yeah. Chris got it right. He said mm-hmm. three for no reason other than just to help others realise which one it isn't, given how bad I am at this. But actually, well done, Chris. Good. Got it right I time. think that's probably my... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I failed. Nice, yeah. Anders says, what do you get yeah. if you play a country song backwards? You get your job back, your family back, your dog back, and the list goes on. Number one is fake. That's not <laughs> Donald Trump speaking. That's a country song in the making. So... <laughs> Uh, Kaz <laughs> says, uh, no mention of crowd sizes, no one calling him sir, and no big men breaking down in tears. Unbelievable. I think I've heard him yeah. word vomit something about calculators and white goods. So my complete guess right. is number one is fake, but who the hell knows? Wow. <laughs> That's a bit of a get out there. That's a bit of a ig- ignorance fallacy, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Renee says, I'm choosing number two as fake news. I think I recall hearing yeah. about a thousand dollar floor for felony shoplifting, but Trump calling the kids with calculators smart, smart people seems unlikely. I can picture Trump holding an invisible calculator and poking at the keys, boop, 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 pretending yeah. to be the kids in the store. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stephen says, I'm going with number two. I'm sure just thinking about someone doing math gives the orange Julius Caesar a headache. <laughs> Julius Caesar. <laughs> yeah. Particularly because it'll be in Roman numerals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sindra says nine fifty is a meme going around, but I'm sure Trump wouldn't be able to remember any specific number, and then and then doesn't make a judgment on which one is the fake one. So uh, yeah, we don't know. But 
that's it just tailed off yeah, yeah. that's all you need to that's all <laughs> you need to say about trump <laughs> and finally nick yeah. says uh, you know what disturbs me most about these it all sounds calm and reasonable for one of the two people running to be president of the united states to say but only one of them yeah I'm going with three being nice, fake news. Nice. The mental image of someone just hoisting a washer dryer on their back and trundling out the front door of Curry's, nodding to the staff as they go, brings me all of the mirth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, yep. sadly, yep. that means you did not oh, win this, no. this one. It's now 76 out of 147. Oh. Which... Oh. which Given that we've played so many, remains around 52%. Yep. Each one, yeah. either way, doesn't make that much of a difference. Don't know why we bother, really. Don't patronise <laughs> Yeah, Stop playing Stop playing the acquiescence card. It's fine. Yeah, fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appeasement in my arse. And it's time for the part of the show that this week, at least, is called Voter Fraud is Not a Logical Fallacy. Because wow. it turns out I didn't need to right. waste so much time writing a book debunking the widespread <laughs> voter fraud that was claimed by mm-hmm, 2,000 mm-hmm, mules. Because mm-hmm. the Heartland Institute did a survey right. in December, actually, it turns out, of last year. Although it's getting more traction recently because Trump talked about it. It's latching with, onto it, of yeah, course. Yeah, he talked about it with Tucker Carlson, yeah, and, yeah. and Tucker Carlson talked about how this is, you know, obvious proof. Yeah. And and this survey proves, actually, uh-huh. that voter fraud was doubt. widespread. Yeah. One in five Whoa. people who, Whoa. who used absentee ballots, mail-in voting, committed uh-huh. at least one kind of voter Whoa. fraud during the 2020 election. So yeah. I take back everything I ever said. About everything. about all of the, the mules and Dinesh yeah. and everything. It turns out I was yeah. wrong, and this survey just blows it out of the water. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so I thought, you know, we should be honest, intellectually, yep. up front, and and admit it, and say, and just go fine. Yeah, let's look at the what we you should talk. To say yeah, we should talk and, about uh, yeah. their findings with a, an open mind mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, say fair enough. Yeah, an good objective point. Objective okay. eye. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 And we're quite willing to wash our mouths out with soap, if not our brains. Absolutely. If, yes. Assuming, obviously, yeah. this this stands up to the slightest well, yeah. scrutiny. Uh, we will, Which obviously it's going uh, to, yeah. yeah I mean, they would, otherwise, why would they publish it? Crazy, yeah. that would be mad. Yeah. So, yeah, no. yeah, the Heartland Institute did this poll in December 2023 with Rasmussen yeah. reports. Yeah. I don't know if you know much about Rasmussen, but they are a, a, a garbage polling group. <laughs> they are... <laughs> I was going to say... Just <laughs> slightly suspect and not 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 well regarded. They tend to be the ones that mm. Trump points to as proof yeah. that he's doing they're brilliantly. The, they're the ones that everybody else points to and says other leading brands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have a tendency to favour outcomes that are complementary of Trump and Republicans in general. Oh, oh. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. And the Heartland Institute mm. is, according to Media Bias Fact Check, an extreme right wing, low quality oh, okay. source. Okay. A little bit to right of centre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not, they're not right centre or a bit biased. Stream. Yeah. They say uh, we rate yeah. overall. We rate the Heartland Institute right biased and questionable based on promoting anti science propaganda, lack of transparency with funding, more than five failed fact checks by IFCN fact checkers. Fair enough. Yeah. They are. <laughs> A group that the Union of Concerned Scientists said Heartland has a long history of intentionally trying to confuse the public on behalf of corporate sponsors. Right. They have received funding in the past from the Koch Foundation. They're climate change deniers, election deniers. They are anti-science and all of that stuff that goes along with that. So And pro-income. Yes. Probably anti-science, pro-income. But that said... You know, that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. the, the poll isn't accurate. It's a it's an indication that right. it should be taken Just based on that, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. With a critical eye. But, right. But yeah. they asked people and people gave answers. So there you, there you know, you go. We, like, we have to listen to the answers that the people gave. Quite, yes. They asked one thousand and eighty three likely oh, US well, that's voters. A, well, huge a sample size. Enormous sample size. Yeah. 
enormous, yeah, <laughs> and very re- representative of the outcome yep. of the entirety of the US. Okay, yeah. So that, uh-huh. that was the, um, the, mm-hmm. the group they started off with. Right. And their, the headlines that they came out with were 17% yep. of mail-in voters admit that in 2020 they voted in a state where they're no longer a permanent resident. Right. Can, can, I, can I also ask what was the political persuasion of the 2.3 people that they asked? <laughs> well, the, the 1, 1,020, 1,083 people were yeah. split yeah. by who they voted for in, or let's say by who they claimed they voted for in the 2020 right. election. Okay. They were split 45% Donald Trump, 46% Joe Biden, 4% some other candidate, 3% didn't <laughs> vote, and 1% weren't sure. Oh, even though they voted. Yeah, well, they right. maybe. Okay. They're not sure whether they voted Pretty, or who they, they voted for. They voted or not. Yeah, and not, if they did, who sure. for? Yeah. yeah. So they answered okay. none of the above for all of the all other right. things. So, okay. so when it says seven, 17% of people cheated the fuck out of the system, we're not quite sure well, what their political persuasion 17% was. 17% admitted that they voted in that particular way. They cheated in that way. But there were yeah. other ways that you could cheat, you see. They, they yeah. voted. 17% yeah. of mail-in voters admit in 2020 they voted in a state where they're no longer a permanent resident. 21% yeah. of mail-in voters admitted that they filled out a ballot for a friend or family member. 17% right. of mail-in voters said they signed a ballot for a friend or family member with or without his or her permission. What? 8% yeah. Yeah. of likely voters yeah. say they were offered pay or a reward for voting in 2020. Wow. So Heartland says, based on this, that yeah. if you can tally all those together, what you get is one in yeah. five voters of the ones who voted by mail admit yeah. one or more ways that they cheated or they broke the law, basically. They voted, they committed yeah. voter fraud yeah. during 2020. Yeah. Justin Haskins, director of the Heartland Institute, says the results of this survey are nothing short of stunning. For the past three years, Americans have repeatedly been told that the 2020 election was the most secure in history. But if this poll's findings are reflective of reality, the exact opposite is true. This conclusion isn't based on conspiracy theories or suspect evidence, but rather from the responses made directly by the voters themselves. A democratic republic cannot survive if election laws allow voters to commit fraud easily, and that's exactly what occurred during the 2020 election, he says. Wow. I was curious yeah. about yeah. this. Yeah. Because it seemed a little high for some of the estimates <laughs> that you get elsewhere. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I reached out to Justin Haskins, director of the right. Heartland okay. Institute, and said, by any chance, do you have the raw data available yeah. that I could look at? Yeah, yeah. And he went, of course we have. And he yeah. pointed me towards the page on Rasmussen's site where ah, they have okay. the details. Which is interesting because... Conclusions they've drawn. Well, while yeah. some of... Yeah. I mean, the, the, the raw numbers that they're quoting are backed up by the data on Rasmussen's site. Yeah. I, I would say that the, the people who said that they voted absentee or with a mail-in ballot in the 2020 election was 30% of the total number. So that brings it down to about 320 people who actually mm-hmm. are split up in their other versions. So when they're talking about 17%, right. it's 17% of about 320, which is what, about 60 people, something like that. So that's the number of yep. people we're, yep. we're talking about. Yep. Some of the questions that they asked uh-huh. don't necessarily point to voter fraud having taken place. For example, during the 2020 election, did you sign a ballot or ballot envelope on behalf of a friend or family member with or without his or her permission? It's a, even with their permission. Well, even with their permission, you can't forge someone's yeah. signature on a ballot. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But they're assuming in saying that that proves voter fraud that the only people who sign a ballot or a ballot envelope are the voter. But that's absolutely not right. true. In many areas, yeah. for example, Wisconsin, when you put your ballot in a ballot envelope, a witness has to sign it. They sign the, the envelope to, to yeah. say that you yeah. have voted. So those people would answer, yes, I have signed a friend or family member's ballot envelope with their permission. Yeah. That is completely if, allowed. If that's the only, it is not voter yeah. fraud. And that's the only response that's available. And you just go, yeah, I did do that. It's more examples of the cherry picking of the argument. Yeah. 
to kind of skew it so it sounds a lot worse than it is, which then justify and it's only the right that do this. Yes, yeah. It then justifies the right justifies the rights curtailing of voter abilities afterwards. They just kind of go, well, yeah, because we've got all of these things which are obviously cheating. So what we're going to do is restrict the hours that you can go to the public drop box. We're going to require increased identification. We're going to deal with things like you, the fact you if you lose your place in the queue because you need to go get a glass of water, which that's it. You can't do it. All of those things are about using this nefarious justification of voter fraud to suppress the votes. It's 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 as transparent as they say the voter fraud is transparent. Even even though it's not, they're just going. What they're doing is cherry picking. This is what goes on, and we're going to spin it, and everybody goes, "Oh God, that's all <laughs> bloody hell." Yeah, yeah, that's it. we can't have that because uh, they know it's the same in the UK. Is that they know that if you have progressive left wing people voting and you didn't restrict the voting access, then they would just win forever yeah. because the right-wing thing is a thing of the past, and it's a thing about the past, They're about bringing up the past that didn't exist. Yeah. So the, yeah. Yeah. the fact that some people said that they voted in a state uh, where they were no longer a permanent resident, uh -huh. some of those people could be students who are registered to vote where... Yeah, yeah. They are a Wherever student. Wherever they're studying. For example, yep, yep. that might be part yep. of that. The people who said that they filled out a ballot in part or in full on behalf of a friend or family member, some mm -hmm. of those, again, could be helping disabled or elderly people fill out ballots, which they are unable right, to do right. themselves, which, again, is completely legal. Yep. Yeah. And you don't need very many people to have done that to, the, to answer this question to get these results. Because yeah. it is, in each case, about 60 people who are saying yes to these questions. Depending on how this poll was administered, there is always the possibility, as with a lot of polls, which people fill in for money or for some other benefit for, for doing the poll, that they yeah. are just filling it in as quickly as they can and saying yes, yes, yes to everything yeah, yeah, yeah. To to get the five cents that they get for filling in a poll, I don't. It's it isn't yep. clear at Walmart. how yep. this yep. poll was administered. So we don't know if it was one of those. But YouGov polls and things like that do that. We know that that yep. that happens. There was a a polling company that asked people if they were qualified to pilot a nuclear submarine, <laughs> which got like a a twenty percent yes rate to because yeah. And they, what they were doing was testing. How how much are people yes. just going to say yes yeah. to everything? Like, what's yeah. the, the how first much are thing? How people reading the yeah. thing? Yeah. How, so, many, how many of you have been in space? So have you been, have you been in space in the last eighteen months? Oh, so yeah. of all of yeah. these answers that they said, well, this yeah. is obvious proof of voter fraud. For for yeah. many of them, there are legitimate reasons why people might have said yes to this without actually committing voter fraud. There are poll-based reasons why people might have said yes without actually meaning yes because they didn't bother to read it or they made a mistake or, or whatever. There are right. There's the possibility that people who understand what this is asking put themselves in as a Democrat and said yes to having mm -hmm. committed voter fraud because they're Republicans who are convinced Democrats commit voter fraud. Right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's nothing yeah. to stop them doing that. Yeah. But... Above all of that, one of the questions you asked pretty early on was how does this break down in terms of Democrats and Republicans? Right. Because obviously the point that the Heartland Institute is making is Democrats committed voter fraud, they stole the election from Trump. Right. But when you look at the raw figures that are on Rasmussen's site, as I said, 45% of the respondents claimed that they voted for Trump. 46% claimed they voted for Biden, but it's it's separated out about 33% each for Democrats, Republicans and independents oh. in the same way as the, the US is pretty much is in terms of population. Right. It's pretty yeah. much yeah. the third, a third each. And that's it. They have 
at least made some attempt to separate this out in in that way. But they have also collected the data of what political party people affiliate themselves with. And when you look at it, when it says, did you fill out a ballot in part or in full on behalf of a friend or family member? Mm -hmm. Of the people who voted absentee, 21% of Democrats said yes, they did fill out a ballot in part or in full on behalf of a family member or friend. Somebody else. 22% of Republicans. Oh, wow. Oh. So almost identical. Yeah. In that. So given that they're accusing people of saying this is why the vote is yeah is not to be trusted yeah they did pretty much almost the exactly same. the same for mm. did you sign mm. a ballot or ballot envelope on behalf of a friend or family member with or without his permission 16% of democrats who voted absentee did or said they did yeah 19% of republicans who Whoa. claimed they voted absentee said that yes they did do that Whoa. I think it's that without people's permission <laughs> with- thing that they kind of went with. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Bloody hell. Do you know a friend or family member, co-worker or other acquaintance, for example, who has admitted to you that she filled out a ballot on behalf of another person? So they also asked that, like, right. do you know someone else who did it? Yeah. 11% of Democrats said they did. 10% of Republicans said they did. So basically, in each case, yeah, yeah. it is split it's the- pretty <laughs> evenly. <laughs> it's, if not... There's, there's one, the, the one yeah, which yeah. was, did a friend, a family member or an organisation such as a political party offer to pay or reward you for voting? That was 11% right. of Democrats said yes, 7% of Republicans. So that skews right. slightly right. more Democrat. Signing a ballot envelope skews more Republican. But pretty much when you tell me I, w- I out, wonder whether the, uh, the kind of paying thing is that Democrats go, yeah, lots of people ask me. Whereas Republicans kind of went, yeah, fewer pe- people asked me because <laughs> they just they just knew I would. I mean, so we, they didn't have to meet up. They they're like new customers. Yeah, we don't know, you know, uh, what that could mean. There are many ways to interpret that. It's it's that's lower yeah. than all the other things that they're claiming were ways that people could cheat. You know, that was eleven yeah. and ten percent, twelve percent for independents, and that's like harder to justify in that there's no legal reason to reward someone for voting although people might have said let's go vote together if you come with me yeah. i'll i'll get your beer or something like that I'll, you know yeah that, yeah there you that go, could yeah. qualify oh, well, essentially let's, but let's get, let's get a tattoo yeah yeah um yeah so yeah we're not it's not clear but it's also not um clarified in any way they didn't yeah. make any yeah. attempt to ask examples or if they did they didn't print them but what is happening is when you look at the figures there is no clear party preference it is it is right. pretty much yeah. all all the way down the middle for both democrat republican and independents and yet yeah. when they printed these results heartland institute in their press releases and in the details on the website and in the stuff that Trump has been talking about and Tucker Carlson has been talking about in relation to this, all points to this as evidence of the kind of fraud that Trump has been talking about where Democrats stole the election in 2020. Evidence that Trump was right all along when he said the Democrats are cheating. Heartland knows. Heartland has seen the numbers. They know if there was any fraud if any of this yeah. relates to real fraud it was happening just yeah. as much among republicans as democrats but what they're saying and this is why they have such an incredibly low rating by media bias fact check uh, um they they're saying this is evidence of democrats stealing the election because they're just not giving all the data and rasmussen as terrible a polling company as they are at least print all of the f- raw figures on their website and finally, some things we really don't have time to talk about. You probably don't remember now, but as I was finishing up recording the last episode, reports were coming through of a second assassination attempt on Trump. The reason you might not remember is it's hardly been in the news since. Is this evidence of the deep state and the mainstream media colluding to normalise political violence against Republicans? No. Yes. It's because <laughs> it didn't really count. I'm not making some conspiracy theory (laughs) argument that it was staged. I'm saying that dumb and ineffective plots like this get foiled by the Secret Service all the time and we never hear anything Mm -hmm. about it. 
In this instance, the guy, who I won't name because fame is a motivator for some of these people, hid out next to Trump's golf course with a rifle for 12 hours. Early reports of gunfire in Trump's vicinity appear to have actually been Secret Service agents firing on the guy who immediately ran away and was quickly captured. It seems that he didn't get a shot off and was never within sight of Trump himself. Of course, Trump tried to fundraise off this and his supporters claim that not being shot by virtue of not being anywhere near the bad guy and the government actually doing its job is somehow evidence of his strength. But this is actually just one of many incidents involving idiots being bad at attacking presidents. In both 2017 and 2020, the Secret Service intercepted two separate letters laced with rice in and intended for Trump, just as they had done for Obama in April and May 2013. In 2017, a guy in an oil refinery in North Dakota stole a forklift and crashed it, and nobody would have even known it was an assassination attempt if he hadn't laid out his plan to police afterwards. Apparently, he was intending to use the forklift to flip the presidential limousine like Lockjaw from BattleBots or Chaos 2 from Robot Wars for our British listeners. (laughs) In all, the Secret Service uncovered and foiled at least 11 assassination plots against Obama, including a guy in 2011 who fired a semi-automatic rifle at the White House and a pipe bomb that was sent to Obama's home in 2018. Two people tried to shoot Gerald Ford within three weeks in 1975. There's a long and storied history of these attempts, some of which resulted in even more serious injuries than a slight scratch on the ear. But it takes a cult to turn them into proof of invincibility. Incidentally, the latest guy's case has been randomly assigned to Trump-loving Florida judge Eileen Cannon, so I expect the outcome will be a public execution and Trump gets to keep all the guy's stuff. Mark Robinson sounds just in name only to be such a wholesome guy. You know, a Swiss family, Robinson, parental values, building a treehouse, looking out for his family to ensure they survive the wilderness and isolation. Yet he immediately disappoints, causes a cultural jolt. Not just as we learned last time that he practically owned all the shares in blockbuster video because of his penchant for VHS porn rentals, but because he once equivalent of tweeted on a porn chat forum. Yes, they existed, apparently. One-handed typing, obviously. I am a black Nazi and advocated the reinstatement of slavery with a turkeys for Christmas kind of vibe, Nespar, saying slavery is not bad. Some people need to be slaves. I wish they would bring it back. I would certainly buy a few. Many of Robinson's comments were gratuitously sexual and lewd in nature. They were made between 2008 and 2012 on Nude Africa, a pornographic website that included a message board. Latterly, his Swiss family Robinson persona encompassed some twisted Man Friday sentiments. If you're a man on Friday night and all of a sudden Saturday you feel like a woman and you want to go to the women's bathroom in the mall, you'll be arrested or whatever we got to do to you. Robinson said at a campaign rally in 2024, We're going to protect our women because he knew all about that on Nude Africa. Having posted, I came to a spot that was a dead end, but I had two big vent covers over it. It just so happened. It overlapped the showers. I sat there for about an hour and watched as several girls came in and showered. And he's currently the Republican nominee for the governor of North Carolina. Should be a shoe in then. If you're going to be subject to racist abuse by your ignorant electorate for just being black, then why not out prejudice them and confuse their allegiances? That way, Trump will be sure to continue to support you, even if no other human being would. While Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are campaigning like crazy, Trump remains merely crazy and isn't devoting quite as much (laughs) of his time to making public appearances. Sure, part of the reason is that he's really old and tired and rallies are expensive when they expect you to pay for everything up front because you never pay your bills. But it's also because spending all his time doing rallies would leave him with less time to grift the rubes out of every last penny they have. And that's really his first love. Just this month, while watching the value of his Trump media shares get smaller and smaller, he's launched several new products, all of which are as high quality and desirable as classic brands like Trump Steaks and Trump Urine Tests. First off, it's Trump Coins. A limited edition coin made from an ounce of almost pure silver and selling for $100 a piece. OK, sure, the current price of silver is $30 an ounce, but these have Trump's face on them and they come with a certificate of authenticity, so they're probably worth loads more than that. In case coins aren't your thing, how about a watch? 
you can get a gold-plated watch with Fight, Fight, Fight engraved on the back for $799 or a solid gold diamond-studded tourbillon watch for the bargain price of $100,000. Whoa. But don't hesitate, there are only 147 of those available. In case you were thinking it might make a good investment, the website warns you that Trump watches are intended as collectible items for individual enjoyment only, not for investment purposes. (laughs) Think about that. Even the kinds of lawyers Trump still employs were smart enough to realise they needed a disclaimer in case anyone thought the watches might be worth something. Individual enjoyment. (laughs) To go with your fight, fight, fight watch, how about some fight, fight, fight cologne, which is available for $129 exclusively from the website gettrumpsneakers.com and features on the box an AI image of Trump with his fist in the air because they were too cheap to pay the royalties for the actual photo. It doesn't ship until November, so there's no word yet on what the scent is, but I'm guessing it smells like a cheap suit soaked in scared piss. Finally... Since Trump had such success with NFTs, he's branched out into another technology he definitely doesn't understand, crypto. Announcing his family's new crypto business on a Twitter live stream, he said, Crypto is one of those things we have to do. Whether we like it or not, I have to do it. He really doesn't have to. But given the number of crypto bros who seem to get in trouble with the SEC, I think maybe we do like it. Yeah. Scared piss. (laughs) If someone says, and everyone still thinks I'm crazy as some kind of justification for saying crazy shit, it's going to give you a pause for thought, no? For one, why the use of still? (laughs) Have people thought you crazy up till this point? Do you think you ought to be checking in with someone objective you trust, say John Goodman, for instance, to see which side of batshit you've been hitherto? Also, the just the crazy bit which is inevitably followed by but it's true is a bit of a triggering surely i say john goodman because this is none other than out of work reinvented as a right-wing mouthpiece roseanne Barr, and not just squawking on that whole phone with the huge curly lead that stretched into the lounge but on a tucker carlson stage show where she expanded on the eating the pets lie to include eating babies and flesh and humans and ghosts and fuck knows what else blood placenta human flesh oh christ what the fuck does it matter these people are just desperate look We all know that the Q thing was made up by a wannabe kung fu opera singer called Ron who failed to become famous because of his need for anonymity in playing a worldwide LARP game. And what we are witnessing is the sound of awful wannabe famous agains being scraped from the barrel of forgotten and flung into the seat of an obsequious fascist enabler, income generator and lawfully designated fiction generator Tucker Carlson show. Now, if these people were, say, Noam Chomsky or Naomi Klein, you know, proper American critiques, we might be worried. But I think we just need to be worried that they're not sufficiently up on the plot of idiocracy to be able to survive. Mike Lindell, the answer to the question, what if Dr. Phil got in a teleporter accident with a leaf blower, has claimed (laughs) that when he chose the totally normal sale price of $14.88 for one of his lumpy pillows, he had no idea that $14.88 was a Nazi dog whistle. For the gloriously uninitiated, the 14 refers to a well-known white supremacist slogan, which is 14 words long, while the 88 is a sneaky way of saying Heil Hitler because H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. Once alerted to the fact that he was using a common neo-Nazi calling card, he immediately apologised for any offence and changed the price. No, he didn't. He claimed it was an attack on him by (laughs) liberal media, specifically citing the Daily Mail, because he wants hand-counted paper ballots in the election and promptly changed the sale prices for multiple other products on his online store to end in 88. You know, to prove it was unintentional and he's definitely not a Nazi. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did he, there's some sort of twisted playing the racist <laughs> card in there, isn't there? Wow. <laughs> in a world where J.D. Vance won't stop banging on about childless cat ladies, Taylor Swift, I see you. You've put your hand up to your umpteen million followers in that disregard. Thank you for your service to sanity. How do you promote your support for the marvel of the curbing of women's rights to have dominion over their own selves and choices and 
yeah, just fuck off men with your belief that you know better, etc., etc., when you yourself are a childish dog dude Republican candidate like, say, Derek Anderson, a candidate running in an open race for Virginia's 7th Congressional District. Well, simples. What you do is you borrow someone else's wife and kids and pose in front of a house in the suburbs with apparently consenting adults and teens who are quite happy to be seen with an incel dog lover. These questions should be asked. Thank you, Tucker Carlson. Something about it doesn't surprise me. There's an implicit acceptance of the weird supposed normal suburban lifestyle that David Lynch so creepily parodied in his films, by the right, that makes it okay to hijack other people's families to promote draconian controls over women, but not okay to be a single guy with a dog promoting draconian controls over women. Put like that, I don't know which is worse. Eek. Jesus, what is it with Republicans and dog killing? Actually, it's worse than that. What is it with Republicans and openly boasting about the dogs they've killed as if other people are going to think they're awesome? With the memory barely faded of Christy Noem shooting a puppy in the face, this time it's Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts. You might also know him as the man behind Project 2025, and if you've seen him defend the hate-filled manifesto on TV, you are probably wondering if the platonic ideal of evil can actually get any worse. Well, strap in. When he was a history professor at New Mexico State University in 2004, he started up a fun conversation in the hallway with his department chair, Kenneth Hammond, who told The Guardian... My recollection of his account was that he was discussing in the hallway with various members of the faculty, including me, that a neighbour's dog had been barking pretty relentlessly and was, you know, keeping the baby and probably the parents awake, and that he kind of lost it and took a shovel and killed the dog. End of problem. Fuck. Kevin Roberts denies this, which I guess is a start, but... Lest you think this is a he said, he said scenario, it's more of a he said, he and he and she and also they said kind of thing. Because another professor and her husband said Roberts regaled them with the story over dinner at his home. And three other professors recall being told about it at the time by his horrified colleagues. The one who had dinner with him also recalled that he said the neighbour in question also had puppies and he'd considered killing them no, too. No. So... If the prospect of firing government employees disloyal to Trump, banning abortions, rolling back LGBTQ plus civil rights, getting rid of the Department of Education, criminalising pornography and instituting a Christian theocracy aren't enough to make you vote against Republicans, (laughs) won't somebody think of the puppies? Think of the puppies! Okay. In Britpol these last two weeks, the right-wing media, or as we call it, the media, have been determined to smear some freebies that Keir Starmer has received as major sleaze when he has received donations over the last five years or so to the value of less than Boris was given to redecorate number 10 in what was called Wallpaper Gate. You remember that? It was the 78th in the list of over a thousand scandals that Boris was not really held accountable for by the same press. At the Labour Party conference, Keir called for the release of the sausages held by the Palestinians and somehow the same right-wing press, or as we call them here in the UK, the press, managed to make that mean that Starmer was anti-Semitic. The same right-wing press, or as we call it, the press, made a great deal of an MP who left the Labour Party because it was focused on greed and self-aggrandisement at the same time as letting pensioners down and threatening the livelihoods of people so rich that they hold their tax liabilities offshore so they don't pay UK tax. The Chancellor, Rachel Rees, is after those people and apparently that will be worse for Britain because they will take their beneficence elsewhere. Meanwhile, the Tory party conference grinds on and the fact that Boris has written a new work of fiction, sorry, his memoirs, was more exciting than anything that happened there. And his memoirs are not all that exciting. So the sausage thing, thanks to a weird homophobic slur about Keir Starmer trending on Twitter, I saw lots of memes about wow. sausages. But wow, what? a homophobic slur what? rather oh, than an anti-Semitic slur. Just one okay. of the, Twitter is a fucking hellscape. I am moving away from Twitter to Whoa. threads. As quickly as I can. Okay. So so okay. come and join us on yeah. threads at Fallacious Trump. Yeah. Anyway, 
So I, yeah, sausage. I saw some memes sausage involving gate. sausages in relation uh-huh. to the homophobia. But I, uh, right. what's the sausages Whoa. thing about? Why is he demanding Palestinians release sausages? What have they have they taken sausages hostage again? Well, actually, it was it was a a, a malapropism for hostages. Oh, he said sausages Obviously. instead of hostages. Yeah, hostages. Oh. It's like breakfast instead of Brexit. That makes you know? uh, so, more sense which... than I expected. So. <laughs> That's all it was. Yeah, yeah. And Fair yet enough. the the right wing press had kind of somehow made the fact that he's calling upon the Palestinians in a in a right. They're not kind of Hamas, but the Palestinians to, to release the sausages. Well, yeah, it's probably Hamas right. by the Palestinians to release the fucking sausages. Release the sausages, right? And then Netanyahu. Won't but will be stopped from calling out all out war in the fucking Middle East, which you know, yeah, let's yeah. not go there. Everybody knew that Starmer meant hostages, he had said sausages, yeah. So they were, they were he saying, was just oh, hungry. You... This, this stuff happens, he was... <laughs> it makes he sense. Breakfast. It you was know, early, it's he's, a Freudian slip, he's... like when you yeah, mean to say one in... thing, but you accidentally say your mother, the other, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you kind of. Bre- breakfast means breakfast, yeah. as as Theresa May said a lot of the time. Yeah. So yeah. no, that's fine. Brexit means breakfast in Bra- in Brussels with croissant, proper breakfast, croissant, you know, yeah. bit of jam. Well, that's all yeah. the bad arguments and faulty reasoning we have time for this week. So you'll find the show notes at fallaciousTrump.com. And if you hear Trump say something stupid and want to ask if it's a fallacy, our contact details are on the contact page. If you think we've used a fallacy ourselves, well, yeah, let us know. <laughs> and if you've had a good time, please give us a review on uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, or simply tell one other person in person about how much they like our podcast. And you can support the show at patreon.com slash ftrump, just like our straw man level patrons, LT, Colleen Lyle, Richard Hunter Hopkins, Will M, Scott, Ozzy on Bank, Laura Tomsick, Schmoots, Mark Reichy, and Amber R. Buchanan, who told us when we met her at QED, we can just call her Amber. So another listener recognised her at QED last year because he kept using her full name all the time. And our true Scotsman level patrons, Sharon Robinson, Renee Z, Melissa Sytek, Stephen Bickle, Janet Uetta, Andrew Houck, and our top patron, Kaz Tui. Thank you so much for being our patrons. It's really very much appreciated. Thank you. You can connect with those awesome people as well as us and other listeners in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Fallacious Trump. All music is by The Outburst and was used with permission. So until next time on Fallacious Trump, we'll leave the last word to the Donald. That's right. Go home to mommy. Bye. Bye. But not okay to be a single guy with a dog promoting draconian promoting draconian controls over our oh. <laughs> It's all gone horribly. <laughs> There's a two. That's two. the thing that's, that's the t- it shouldn't me be off. two, yeah. Yes. There you go. Thank you for correcting that. Fixed. Thank you. We find that out. Call we'll the, definitely get it this time. That will make all the dims. <laughs> that will make all the dims. Okay. There's an implicit accept. Oh, we're, an... going, we're going all the way back there again. Oh, God, go back there. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs>